Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with a brand new review. This is going to be for the Top Racer Mini Arcade, as well as the Top Racer collection of games that are being released digitally. So think of this almost like two reviews in one. Now, I was sent these for review from the publisher, probably because they know that I like racing games, and this is right up my alley, and I was very curious to check these out. These games were developed by Gremlin, which also made the classic Lotus Esprit games. Now, if Top Racer doesn't sound familiar to you, it's because outside of Japan, we got these games as Top Gear. This little mini arcade plays Top Racer 2, and it retails between $55 and $60 US, depending on where you buy it. So it's pretty cheap. Now, if you're not familiar with Top Racer, again, I mentioned that it was originally a Super Nintendo racing game released all the way back in 1993. Its big standout feature, though, was that it included soundtracks by a guy named Barry Leach. This guy has worked on a ton of games starting back on the Commodore 64. We're talking games like Speedball 2, and then in the 1990s, he made the soundtrack for classic arcade racing games like San Francisco Rush 2049, and then he's been making soundtracks for new racing games too, like Horizon Chase Turbo. And what I like about his soundtracks is that they're very listenable outside of the games themselves. You can put these soundtracks on while you're working in the background and they are just so memorable, so catchy. I want to give you a sense of the size of this thing. So here it is compared to a Nintendo GameCube. And then here it is next to the Xbox 360. So as you can see, yeah, it's pretty small. This particular mini arcade has 64 tracks that take place in 16 different countries. And the new thing about this I was really excited to check out is that it includes a little steering wheel. That's something that I hadn't seen before, at least with these particular games. And as with all of these, of course, the objective is just to race as fast as you can and try to get number one. Now, I will say when picking this up for the first time, it did feel kind of cheap. Again, keep in mind, this is only $55. But, you know, with a mini arcade sitting on the counter, you don't want it to fly around. And so that was a bit of a concerning thing. Although, the cool thing about this is that it supports not only just plugging in, but you can also put four batteries in it, which is what I did, which that does help make it feel a bit more sturdy, a little bit more weight. And I have to say, playing with that steering wheel, it feels pretty good. I mean, it looks small, and it is, and I have large adult hands, and so it is kind of weird to sort of use your, your you know, left hand to steer with it. I actually found that over time when playing it, I would actually drive with my thumb, and that was surprisingly useful. I mean, it worked really well. As you can see here, it has a full color LCD display that looks good, works well. And I think they did a really good job with the colorful art wrap that goes around this. As you see, it's on the top, it's on the sides, it's where the controls are, it's on the marquee, and it all looks really good. Now, I did notice something kind of odd when I was going back and looking at the footage. I didn't notice it while I was actually playing the mini arcade, and that is occasionally, you'll see it, there's this little line that appears kind of on the horizon a little bit. And I don't think it's a defect in the LCD because it moves around as you play the game. It's really kind of weird. I think it's actually an issue with the emulation. And again, I didn't notice it initially because you are quite a bit away from the mini arcade when you're playing it and you're mostly looking at your car in the road. But once you see it, it's kind of hard to ignore it. And as for playing the game, it's a classic mid 90s arcade racing game. You either love these or you don't. And yeah, it's really fun. I mean, again, it's not gonna blow you away by modern standards, but if you are nostalgic for this type of game, again, I keep coming back to the price for 55 bucks. Now, if it was double that, uh, you know, I'd have to kind of him and ha. I think I'd have to say, you've gotta be a real fan to probably pay, you know, a hundred bucks. But again, for around 50 bucks, nah, I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. In addition to the mini arcade, they also released the Top Racer collection digitally. So 
For 20 bucks, they have this available on the PC, Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. Uh, I'm actually playing the Xbox Series version here. And with this, you get four Top Racer games. This is the first game in the series and it was released for the Super Nintendo back in 1992. And in the game, you can choose between four different cars that are based on kind of real sports cars. You have 32 tracks to choose from. And the thing about this game, which I like, is that it does give you Nitro Boost. So that's something that you're probably gonna wanna use. You have to use it sparingly, but I do like it that it's there if you need it in a pinch. There are a bunch of options you can mess around with since this is doing emulation. So in there, you can change the video. So for instance, you can mess with the screen type. You can make it look more like a CRT or scan lines. You can also uh, enlarge it a little bit. You can also add background borders if you wish. Interestingly, there is a cheats option that you can unlock if you finish the campaign mode. So it makes you work for that. There is an extras option off the main menu, and in there you can look at the achievements that you can unlock. There is a gallery that lets you see the original Japanese versions of the game manuals. Not entirely sure how useful this is. It's kind of almost just for archiving purposes, but it's cool that they added it. There's a sound test, and there's also a redeem code. I'm not sure what this is yet. So it's a brand new compilation, so Perhaps in the future, they'll use this to unlock additional games or modes or cars. I don't know. There is an online mode as well, where you can play with friends over the internet or random people online, you know, if they share a public room. Now, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was because I was doing this in the middle of the day, but when I went in there, there was really only two of them. One of them was private, one of them was public. I tried joining the public one and it didn't let me in. I tried creating my own room and letting it sit there for about 30 minutes and no one joined. So maybe I need to do it on a weekend or maybe a couple weeks after this is out. I'm not entirely sure, but again, it's cool that it's there. Now I mentioned that the mini arcade is based on the second game. And so you have it here as well. And like I said, it came out on the Super Nintendo back in 1993. And this is a better game than the first one. They added some new stuff. The first one being is that it's got a little bit more realistic, more natural feel to your car. I feel like this game is definitely a little bit more fun. You also have to worry about damage to your car here, and there are resources that you collect, and there are upgrades that you can make to basically get, you know, get better performance out of your car. And also there is weather that will change, and so that will affect how your car drives and they bumped the tracks up to 64. So I think this was a good choice to make that mini arcade machine out of. And then they have the third one called Top Racer 3000. This was released in 1995, and this one's completely different. So basically they moved it a thousand years into the future. And because of that, they took the opportunity to just kind of rethink this entire game. Now on a surface, it probably looks similar, but it definitely feels different. The moment that I fired this up, I could tell, I was like, oh yeah, this definitely has a different feel, which is cool actually, because once I got used to it, I was like, oh yeah, this is probably my favorite of the three so far. Being that this is so far in the future, they add a bunch of stuff like nuclear fusion engines and cobalt titanium armor and things like that. The thing to know though that, that I like about this is that they added really two things. And one of them is that you can jump your car and you also have a magnet that can slow down the cars in front of you. And those two things right there really change how you race and play in this game. Also, I like the fact that they have 47 tracks that are on different planets. So depending on what planet you go to, you're gonna get a much different art design, a much different track design. So again, that kind of keeps it fresh and interesting. And then the final game that they include in here is, it's not really a completely brand new game. Basically they call it Top Racer Crossroads. It's a modified version of the original game, but it has brand new cars in it and some exclusive content. So think of it almost like as a, you know, Top Racer 1.5. So all told for 20 bucks, you get these four games right here in which, you know, okay, five bucks a piece. That seems pretty, you know, pretty reasonable, I think. Now, should you go out and get this? It really depends on if you like going and playing these really old school arcade racing games. 
I have to admit, I like these kind of games, but I've sort of moved on over the decades. I mean, going back and playing them is obviously very nostalgic. I started playing Pole Position way back in the arcades in the early 80s, right? But some of these games can be kind of annoying because they're so sprite-based. And so, you know, sometimes you can't see over hills very well or obstacles just seem to pop up next to you. The other thing that's really frustrating, especially in the first game, is that the, the computer AI opponents, the other drivers, they are just brain dead and sometimes just annoying. These games always start you at the back of the pack and you have to fight your way up the, the rankings to number one. And what that means is that in the beginning lap or two laps, you're basically stuck with these other computer cars that just bump into you all the time and you're trying to get around them. Sometimes the track is really narrow. It can be kind of frustrating and annoying, especially to a modern player. But that said, these games are still fun today. People still love playing them. They're nostalgic for them, and I am as well. I don't know if I go back and play these all the time, but I think it's cool that they're keeping them alive and keeping them fresh for you know new gamers on new systems. But I would love to know what you think down in the comments below. Were you a fan of Top Racer slash Top Gear back in the day? Or the Lotus Esprit games? Or any of those other amazing gremlin developed racing games? I know for me personally, they developed Whiplash on the PC back in the day. And at the time, I thought that was amazing. So anyways, guys, love to know what you think. Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.